Okay, my intention uh, with this series is to, I'm going to be weaving cloth. Well, getting started, I mean, I think you should look around. All you really need is something to wind some thread on if you would like to weave cloth. I mean, these cardboard looms are the one of the easiest things. Uh, you can cut some little slits in the top to hold the, the thread in place. Wind a bunch of thread and tie it so that it's tight. I don't like this method. Uh, the reason is it's really hard to get underneath and I really like to get my hands underneath so this is not my favorite method although uh, they use a lot use this a lot in schools and stuff. There are ways to sort of bend um, the cardboard up so that there's a little space in between but again I'm not a big fan of this. I don't know if anybody's done weaving on that. Um, but the box loom is, is one of my favorites, and the reason I, you can see I've already started weaving here is just that um, you can get underneath and you can work with your fingers a little bit. Um, I usually make some slits in the top with a little scissor. I also slit the sides here because when I start weaving I always use this tension um, thread here. I'm not going to show you the weaving part now. I just I'm just trying to give you some ideas because it's so simple and it's really fun to try to invent something and just figure out how to do it. Get some thread, get something you think will work and just try setting yourself up uh, a little tension warp here. Um, so and the other thing, uh, you know, I, I usually use uh, old crochet cotton. That's one of my favorite warps. It's very strong. You want to make sure you have something that's strong. I mean, you can even use sewing thread if you want to get fine. Uh, but the thing is to try to, to pull on that, you know, to make sure it's strong enough. And then the other thing uh, you'll need besides some kind of support and thread is a tapestry needle, which is one of these really large eye needles, handles just about any kind of thread. You can also use your fingers, but the needle comes in handy. I mean, I've also used uh, wooden bowls. In this case, I've just made a loop at each end and tacked them in. Um, I mean, I do a lot of my weaving on these kinds of things. Twigs, you know, they work. I really like um, green twigs that are pliable so you can kind of rubber band them together and give yourself kind of a loop here and then you can just play with uh, getting that thread tight enough to weave on. Um, baskets are also fun. I love these baskets that have the handles in them because it's really easy to wind your, your warp on there. So I've got a lot of things set up here that I'm going to play with um, I've actually, you might have remembered this one. This basket is actually woven from cloves. I was brought back from Indonesia by my brother. But a lot of these small pieces um, that I do are woven on basket looms. Um, baskets also allow you to tack in and use your needle uh, to go through the holes if that's necessary. It, uh, and also they don't slip much. So again, it's a matter of trial and error, but there's got to be something around that you can weave on without going to too much trouble. Um, you know, some of my longer pieces and some of the pieces I've done recently, and here you can see an example actually of one that I, where I tuck the ends in and one that has all the threads hanging on the back. One of my favorite loom, types of loom looms is a beading loom. And the reason this is such a good tool is it has this little spring thing here where you can space out your threads and you don't have to do much except cut a whole bunch of threads the same length, knot them on one end, and then kind of wind them onto one side and knot them on the other end and wind them. It's really easy and then you just spread them out. I'll go through each one of these, but this these kind of looms cost like five dollars or something. You can find them anywhere if you look up beading looms. There's even larger versions of those. Um, you can see here. And you can get quite a bit of length on one of these. So that's the only kind of loom that I would suggest if you really felt like 
you wanted to make an investment. But really, the the fun is finding something to weave on that uh, not only um, seems to work, but also seems easy to you. You know, winding a, a warp on a fence or on a deck rail and everything, that's interesting. Um, but it's really hard on your back. It's it's really easy to have something small that you can hold in your lap and and work with. So I'm going to start out really small um, and just show you some of the techniques that I use to weave uh, that might be interesting to you.